Hey, it's Derek from WatchMeCode.net. So I recently uploaded a uh, intro video for the YouTube channel here where I talk a little bit about what I'm doing with the channel and why I'm doing it, but I also ask you to drop some questions into the comments below. You know, leave me some questions, ask whatever it is you want to know, basically an ask me anything kind of situation. And the first comment that I got dropped in there was from a uh, Douglas Berg. And I want to read uh, Douglas's uh, comments and also his question and get to all of them here. So he starts off by asking, or really by saying, I'm learning to code, actually relearning. I studied computer science in college for two years before finally completing another degree, but that was like 15 years ago. Can you discuss your experience quitting your full-time job and moving into working for yourself? I am primarily working on web technologies, uh, JavaScript, CSS, HTML, and Meteor slash React. How might you start looking for client work if you were starting today? So there's several different questions and comments in here, Doug. Uh, Douglas, sorry, whatever you prefer there. Um, I do want to address most of them, if not all of them. Uh, there's a lot of things that, that we can cover here, uh, so hang on just one second and we will get right to that. So the first thing I want to say, Doug, is congratulations, good for you, amazing, awesome. Um, getting back into coding is something that I think would be good for anybody that's done it in the past, or frankly, anybody that's learning to code. Amazing, good job, uh, congratulations. Keep moving forward. Um, I personally love the industry that we are currently in. It's just a ton of fun. It's, it's you know, I, I, I get paid to do what I love to do and, and to have fun doing it. You mentioned that you have a career, I'm sorry, a degree in something other than computer science, which is you know, coincidental. I don't have any kind of degree in anything related to software or computer science or anything like that. I actually have a two-year degree in music, of all things. I did uh, sound recording technologies, music composition at a little junior college in my hometown. And then I spent a year in Denver, Colorado at a college there studying sound recording technologies. But... Software development is where I landed in my career, and, and I'm quite happy with it. It's a ton of fun. So the first real question was, uh, can you discuss your experience quitting your full-time job and moving into working for yourself? That's um, a long, long, long story if you really want all the details. It actually it goes all the way back to my teenage years, and potentially even further back than that. Um, I, my dad is somewhat of an entrepreneur, so he's always been you know, starting new businesses and working for new companies and doing different things. And as I was growing up, it, it just kind of made sense that I would, you know, get paid to do the things that I could do. And I guess my first real s scenario in working for myself came about in my, you know, teenage years, 15, 16 years old, when I started building websites back in the in the early to mid 90s. And I very quickly got a small group of people that liked what I did and started asking me to do things for them, mostly band-related. I had a lot of friends that were in bands, and they wanted websites. Um, I did a few things for some local businesses back in my hometown, but it kind of started there. Uh, really, the jump into full-time working for myself, though, didn't happen until much later. It was only about five, six years ago now. It's currently 2016. And I think my first full-time work-for-myself position was in 2010. And that kind of came about through friends, really. I had um, At the time, I was blogging on a website called LosTechies.com, and I had a good friend there named Joey. And Joey was working for a company out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Uh, they were hiring. I applied, got the job there, and worked with Joey for about six months before he left to go do some independent contracting for a friend of his where he lives in Virginia. So about six months after that, Joey reached out to me and said, hey, I want to bring a second person into this contract, and I think you'd be a good fit for the work. 
It was Ruby on Rails work, which I'd done some Ruby at the time and was familiar with Rails, and it sounded like a lot of fun. So it was really the conversations just with my friend Joey through working together with him at, at a previous company and then him having some openings available to, to add another person onto the contract that he was working on. That's really what brought about my ability to jump full time into um, working for myself. Uh, prior to that, though, actually, I did have some experience in doing some side jobs. And I think that's kind of an important key here is if you already have a full time job and if you're looking to get into you know, self-employed kind of work, working for yourself, it's it's often easiest to start with side jobs somewhere else. Get get some work on the side, after hours, on the weekends, whatever it happens to be. And for me, that started in, I think it was roughly 2006, 2007 era. I was at a, a, a one-day conference in Austin, Texas, and it was dealing with .NET, which is what I was doing at the time, and I asked a lot of really good questions during the sessions and provided some feedback and answers for other people in the audience that had questions. And at the end of this one day conference, I was approached by somebody from the audience who said, hey, I really liked the questions and answers that you provided, you know, during the, the conference. It was it showed that you've really thought about this and have some good insight and I have a need to bring on a contractor for some part-time work. And so for me, it was like, oh, wow, this is great. I, you know, I've never done this before, but it would be nice to have an extra little bit of income to do this project. It sounded like it would be interesting. And so I spent you know, three to six months helping that person out and, and working on that until life situations uh, made it so that I couldn't do it anymore. We were about to have our first, um, my, my wife and I were about to have our first child. So it just didn't make sense for me to put in after hours work when I would be spending time with my new baby. So I left that and then it was several years later that I jumped off into that full time work with my friend Joey. But I want to I want to make a couple of points here, a couple of interesting notes in in all of that. The first thing is the best way to get any job, whether or not you're looking for full-time work or you know work from home as a self-employed contractor kind of person or consultant or whatever it is, the absolute best way to get work is through your network. The people that you know in the industry are going to be the people that you can reach out to when you're looking for a job or that may reach out to you when they have a job available. And if you don't already have a network of people in the industry, that is your number one priority. Absolutely, your number one priority. Find local user groups or meetups or whatever they're called these days. Find places where other developers that are doing things that you think are interesting are gathering. Go to those meetings. Start talking to people. Get your face out there in front of the crowd, just in the crowd. Talk to the people that are organizing the events. Find out how you can get involved in some way if you have the capacity to do so. But make sure you are getting out there in the world so that people in your area and or on the internet know who you are, know what your skill sets are, and know that if they have a position, they can come to you because you're interested or know that, hey, this person may come to me at some point in the future because they have a skill set that I might be interested in. That network of people, of associates, of professional contacts is absolutely 100% critical to getting any job, especially a work-for-yourself, self-employed contracting type situation. Now, I got pretty lucky once I was out of the full-time employment and into doing this on my own, I ran into, or not really ran into, I was handed Backbone JS. My, my coworker and partner on that contract, Joey, he and I were tired of dealing with jQuery on its own and writing terrible code. So he spent like a week or so and went out and found several different JavaScript libraries to, to choose from and came back with Backbone JS. This is like really early days, like version 02, version 03 of Backbone JS. 
and I immediately fell in love with it. I just absolutely loved the patterns that I saw that I could produce in code with Backbone.js because it reminded me of what I was doing in Windows. So I started blogging about it, as I did at the time. I blogged about everything that I was learning. And in the process of blogging about Backbone.js, I started to get more of a following. I started answering questions on Stack Overflow. I'm still the number one answerer for Backbone.js on Stack Overflow. I started writing blog posts. I started doing conference talks. I started building an audience around Backbone.js. Didn't really mean to. It just kind of happened. It was me just talking about the things that I wanted to talk about. But ultimately, that work, that effort led me to my next contract. The person that I had worked with, um, the person that I had worked for with Joey basically didn't have a whole lot of work left for me to do. So I went and and started um, um, reaching out to the people that were already contacting me, asking me to you know, answer questions or help them with a project or do whatever. And I very quickly found that I could make a lot more hourly rates by doing Backbone JS work than by doing Ruby on Rails work at the time. So it, it worked out for me in that my audience from Stack Overflow and from my blogging and from the conference talks and everything else, they started seeing me as somebody that was knowledgeable and somebody that you know was already spreading a lot of information out there in the world and somebody that could probably help them in their projects. And so for a couple of years in the whole backbone era, I really didn't have to look for clients. I was very regularly, like on a weekly, sometimes daily basis, having to say, no, sorry, I don't have any time available. People were constantly coming to me. And so that would really be the second point in in the things that I'm saying here. First one being build your network. Second one being get to blogging, get out there, get on Stack Overflow, get something out there, some place where you can show the work that you do and the things that you're learning. If you don't have a blog already, I highly recommend getting one started. My friend John Sonmez over at simpleprogrammer.com, he's got this How to Market Yourself as a Software Developer course where he talks about blogging. He's got a, a course on how to set up your blog. Highly recommend checking out his material. It's well worth the, the time and investment to get a blog up and running and to get yourself out there on the Internet so that people can see the work that you're doing. So there's there's several different aspects of this. There's the networking. There's the blogging. There's, you know, I'm doing YouTube videos now. I've got screencasts at Watch Me Code. There's a lot of different things that you can do to get out there, get the clients coming to you because you're already sharing your knowledge and sharing your information. These are long-term plays, though. I know that this is a difficult thing to break into. It's not like you can just suddenly, overnight, have instant success. These are really long-term plays that will help your career overall. Short-term, yeah, you're probably going to have to go through some recruiters. You're going to have to look at you know, job ads for, for, for various um, websites, from various websites like uh, you know, maybe Stack Overflow Careers or, or GitHub, the, the, the careers at, um, that they have listed at GitHub, the jobs that they have. There's a lot of different options there. But long term, build that network, get yourself out there in front of other people and start having yourself known as a person who is knowledgeable. And I think that's going to help out far more than, than any other thing that you could be doing. Um, let's see. I guess I've really answered all the questions about how I have how I jumped into full time work. It was really a friend of mine that gave me that contract that allowed me to do that. But then the second question: How might you start looking for client work if you're starting today? Well, if I were starting today, I would probably go to some of the meetups. I would probably be asking around at, at meetups, like say, "Hey, you know, I've got uh, time available. I'm looking for work on the side." Get out on Twitter, get on LinkedIn, maybe get on any you know meetups that you can find. Just get yourself out there and in the community so that you can build the network and build a group of people that know who you are so that you can find those jobs. It's definitely not easy. It's not always fast. It's a slow process. But getting yourself out there in front of people like that is definitely the way to go.
I hope that I've answered your questions well enough, Douglas. If you have any additional questions, be sure to drop a comment down below in this video and be sure to subscribe to the channel so that you can stay up to date with thoughts on code from watchmecode.net.